and Silas here? Well, I guarantee you, out in secret you will. Maybe not in the open. Hmm. Verse 23, And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely, who, who had receiving such a charge, thrust them in to the near the... In, into the inner prison. It just blows my mind. I had to start laughing. He, they said to keep them safe, and he just thrust them into prison. Now, they said he's supposed to keep them safe. Hello. <laughs> Who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in stocks. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed mm -hmm. and sang praises unto God, uh -oh. and the prisoners heard them. Now, y'all, they done been preaching all day. They're tired. And they done been beat 39 times. 40 minus 1. That's right. So they're in pain. And they're bleeding. Hello. And they're tired. You see, over here right now, we, we're, we're not beat like that. We still have a little bit of freedom. But spiritually, Satan's going to persecute one way or another. Hmm. If he can't get to you with a physical hand, he will come at you spiritually and beat the fire out of you. Mm -hmm. and some of y'all feel it. And it's more dangerous in many ways. Because you can't see it coming and you don't know which way it's coming from. Mm -hmm. You can't. You can't say, oh, here they come. I see it's the, the government or the Romans or the soul. Here they come to get me. No, or here's the Muslims. No, no, no. It's spiritual. So you don't know what family member they might come to. You don't know what person at Walmart they may come to. You don't know what person on your job they may come to. But spiritually they attack you. That's right. And they beat this mind up. No, I'm oh. talking to somebody. Mm. Oh. Amen. Hello? Mm -hmm. And you're tired. Mm. And you're weary. And you're wore down. And you're like them. They had to be tired. It's midnight. The midnight hour. And guess what? Yeah. Paul Ooh. knew the key of David. <laughs> and as Paul knew the key of David, and he went through his mind, you know, David was persecuted in the cave. David was chased by Saul. Religious persecution, which was happening to them. Oh, which is going to happen to us. You know, David was without food. He was without the luxuries of the city living in a cave. You know, David still praised God. Wow, I think I'm going to praise God. And Silas has joined me. And boy, they got the praise of God. Because he had the keys to the kingdom. And the key of David, praise God. And as he started doing that, what happened? Oh, the prisoners heard them. Uh oh. Those unbelievers looking on your life, they see you. <laughs> they see you walking around. <laughs> I hate this and I hate that. I can't stand my family life. But my husband does this, my wife's always crazy. Oh, my job is murder. Oh, oh. And those looking on saying, I don't want to be no Christian. There you go, that guy's nuts. I don't want nothing to do with him. Right. They knew what they were doing. They said, thank you, Jesus, that we're in chains. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus, that you've locked us up. Thank you, Jesus, that I've been beat. Yeah. Oh, praise God for your yeah. namesake. Go ahead. Those other looking on her. <clears throat> How in the world? They must have some type of supernatural power. Remember? Praise transfers you into the supernatural power of God. Huh. Hello? They must have something we don't got. Ooh. That's what we need to do, folks. <laughs> Stop the murmuring and complaining. And praise the living God. Yeah. You want people to be saved? They're watching you. Mm -hmm. You you proclaim yourself to be a Christian. Don't think somebody's not watching you. Yeah. They're watching them, and they say these men have power. Yeah. They have power over the mind. They have power over the situation. They got power over the persecution. Oh, can oh. you hear me, y'all? Yes. Verse twenty-six. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were open, and everyone's hands were loosed. Golly! You see the breaking? And how crazy God broke the oppression, broke the persecuted mind, broke the persecuted body, broke everything loose, and the believers looking on seeing the power of God in their lives. So all the jailmates ran off right. We're free, we're free, let's fight Rob again. Did they? And the keeper of the prison awaking out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had fled. 
But Paul crying with a loud voice saying, Do yourself no harm, for we are all here. Mm. Uh -oh. <laughs> and y'all don't think that's supernatural. Come on now. Uh, <laughs> you, you let a prison around here. <laughs> you let an earthquake come and break those, those, those bars loose and let the guards fall over. And you let that razor wire split. And you watch people take off. And they ain't coming back. These people have seen something supernatural. Right. And that's what God expects out of us. That people see something supernatural in you. They really will. They'll see certain things in your life that say, I don't know how they are holding up. Come on. I don't know how they're making it. Through all they've been through, they're still praising God. Mm -hmm. yeah. Come on, him. I know you will. And as and, and is, is inviting as freedom looked, to go out there and steal, kill, and destroy again to put them back in prison, they wanted what Paul and Silas had. Mm. They wanted that kind of freedom. Mm -hmm. Hell of them. So they sit there. Y'all, this is a real, this happened. This is real. Mm. It's not just a fairy tale or a story. This really happened. Come on. If it happened in the early church, it can happen in our Amen. church. Amen. That's what the Lord is trying Amen. to tell you. There is a key. There is a key. Updated. Woo. And he's giving it to you. He's giving it to you by his high price that he paid. Verse 29. Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? <laughs> That's a good question. Yeah. Oh. My goodness. If we would put off the power of God from our lives and would shine the light of the power of God in our lives, we would have more people saying, what must I do to be saved? How can I enter in to what God's given you? Woo! Come on, son. No. Come on. If the angels rejoice in heaven over one, that has come to Jesus Christ. How much should we rejoice over this story of that jailer saying, what must I do to be saved? Hmm. Hello. Come on. When we open the word of the living God, we ought to praise Him saying, thank yeah. you, Jesus. Amen. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. I love your word. Yes, Lord. I'm telling you, I'm showing you something. The Lord has put it on my heart to show you something this morning. By the Spirit, by the Holy Spirit, God. There is a key He's trying to give you. There's a key He's trying to give you. How come we were taking prescription and go get it filled and not take a key from God? <laughs> How come? What's wrong with us? Well, so God sends the prescription. God works through that. How come we don't believe the word of the living God anymore? How come we don't take it and trust that man that's giving us some stupid, wicked stuff that's come out of the ground or a tree root? And we'll say, well, I believe in that. But we won't trust in the victory that Jesus gives us through the cross of Christ.